Insomniac's creative director, Brian Intihar, has officially confirmed the development of a third Spider-Man game. He didn't reveal any new information, but promised that, according to the studio's plans, third part is set to be a kind of end game for the gaming franchise. This seems logical, especially considering that in the post credits scene of the sequel, we see Norman Osborn visiting Otto Octavius, who is locked in solitary confinement at the Raft prison. When Osborn asks Octavius what he's writing, Octavius responds that he's preparing the final chapter, However, the specifics of this plan remain unknown. If we connect this scene with Brian Intihar's words about Spider-Man 3, it's possible to speculate that this final chapter might involve a cunning plan to kill Peter Parker, a script that could easily come to fruition in the third game. Such a tragic ending could serve as a perfect conclusion to the entire trilogy. Just think about it. By the time the third Spider-Man, we will have known Peter for over eight years. However, this assumes the game will be dropped by the end of 2025, which seems unlikely given that Insomnia has already announced the Wolverine. Producers have confirmed that the entire Spider-Man team has shifted their focus to working on the Wolverine game. Due to the studio's busy schedule, it's not realistic to expect the third Spidey before 2026. We eagerly await more updates. Let's continue discussing the villains. What are you writing? The final chapter. The death of Peter Parker would be a logical conclusion to the trilogy. Much like Tony Stark's death marked the end of an entire phase in MCU. Thus, I believe that Octavius's plan will succeed. After all, Otto has always stood out from other villains because of his superior intellect. He will play a significant role in the third game. That's for sure, as Insomniac directly teased his involvement in the post credit scene. In the same scene, Norman questions him about the secret identity of Spider-Man. With this knowledge, that iconic duo will have a significant advantage in not only breaking Peter as a hero, but also as a person. In Spider-Man 3, there's no escaping tragic scenes and deaths, and what better reason for such a climax than the fall of the main character? Parker will sacrifice himself to protect all New Yorkers and will remain a legend in the eyes of everyone. In Insomniac's games, there's no actual Doctor Strange who could erase everyone's memory and return the situation to its original state. It's worth noting that the relationships between Otto Octavius and Norman Osborn could have developed differently differently in the comics. It's important to mention that in the Marvel Universe, characters and their relationships can change depending on the plots and storylines. However, in many canonical versions, Octavius and Osborn have always been antagonists to each other, as was also portrayed in the first game. These two characters were known for their own villainous personalities and often clashed with each other in their attempts to achieve their ambitious goals. In the first part, Otto accused Norman of cutting off his funding. Octavius, on the other hand, was a brilliant scientist and engineer who genuinely believed he was changing the world for the better by creating next-generation prosthetics. Otto began to experience personal and professional setbacks, leading to his transformation into Dr. Octopus. In the post credit scene of the sequel, he remarks to Norman that everyone experiences loss, and there's nothing surprising about that. However, Osborn didn't visit him without a purpose. Firstly, he wants to learn the secret identity of Spider-Man, but Otto is not foolish enough to reveal all the secrets without asking for something in return, he will most likely request Norman's help in securing his release. Secondly, Osborn need more allies to eliminate Parker. Doc Ock and Green Goblin have been allies in different comic books, especially within villainous groups like the Sinister Six, where they joined forces to achieve common goals. A similar storyline is what we might see in the third game. In the first act, Norman will eventually release Otto, and they will begin assembling new members. Don't worry, brother. I will do what you could not. While the futures of Doc Ock and the Green Goblin seemed clear, the fate of Chameleon remains uncertain. He made a cameo appearance in the second game, hiding and observing Spider-Man on a rooftop. In one of the side quests titled Unidentified Targets, you track down Kraven's drones to find a specific individual. Along the way, they discover that the data on this individual varies significantly, ranging from ordinary civilians to people who have been deceased for years to non-existent entities. After analyzing all the data, the Spider-Man realized that Craven was actually searching for his half-brother, the Chameleon, a longtime adversary of the original Spidey who had escaped from prison after being captured years ago. Meanwhile, Chameleon makes several failed attempts on his brother's life and closely monitors the Spider-Man's progress, determined to accomplish what Craven could not. He is depicted as an Asian-looking man, and the fact that he is the Chameleon indicates two key things. First, when he is revealed to us, a white glitch appears on his face, suggesting that he is concealing his true identity, 
Second, he refers to Craven as his brother. However, I believe that his storyline might serve as the foundation for a potential story DLC because I can't see how he fits into the main plot of the sequel. Nevertheless, Chameleon is sure to make an appearance in the future one way or another. As part of Spider-Man 2's many side quests, Peter helping out Yuri Watanabe, aka Wraith, as she investigates a cult who worship fire. They refer to themselves as The Flame. This quest is optional, but you can choose to complete it and catch a glimpse of the storyline for the third game. During this mission, you encounter a character known as The Flame, whose real name is Cletus Cassidy. Throughout the mission, you observe how these cultists, who live like vagrants, are deeply devoted to something. In the mission's climax, you attempt to stop a train that the cultists are trying to blow up. At first, their motive is unclear, but as the events unfold, Spider-Man nearly burns alive while trying to prevent the explosion. It becomes evident that Cletus Cassidy stopped the train to steal a capsule containing symbiote, which he will likely use to become Carnage. The moment he acquires the substance, it even changes color to red. This is a clear foreshadowing of the appearance of the next supervillain in the series. We've all seen how Insomniac brilliantly portrayed Venom. Finally, we got a truly villainous Venom, as opposed to the friendly anti-hero from Tom Hardy's portrayal. Now imagine Carnage, folks. Ideally, I'd love to play an R-rated version of Spider-Man 3 because how can you depict Carnage without the necessary brutality? However, I enjoyed how Insomniac showed Cletus, who has already caused a lot of trouble for Spider-Man, attempting to burn him alive. As a result, he still has the red symbiote and we're sure to see him in the third part. Cassidy is a psycho fanatic in the game, mentioning various prophecies each time. I believe that Carnage will continue the Hive mission of Venom, but this time the red symbiote will be become even more powerful and cruel. He could become a sort of prophet for the symbiote god, Null. Nevertheless, Carnage will be the icing on the cake for the third installment. In the second Venom movie, the creators foolishly ruined him, and it seems like Insomniac is the only one who can depict Cletus as he should be. Maniacally cruel, cold-blooded, and terrifying. Many believe that the Carnage and Yuri Watanabe storylines should continue as DLC, but I disagree. Guys, Carnage is such an iconic villain that he deserves proper attention in a full-fledged installment. Chameleon could potentially work as DLC, but not the Red Symbiote. Many are concerned that there won't be enough villains left for the third game, as the first two games introduced almost all the iconic ones. However, the Marvel Universe has plenty of fantastic antagonists, and Null is a prime candidate for an appearance. He is a massively scaled villain on par with Thanos, and he could easily steal the spotlight from the Green Goblin. Anticipating a teaser in a post credit scene or a cameo from him is definitely worth it. Furthermore, the death of Venom, and subsequently Carnage, could greatly infuriate Null, who seeks the revival of all symbiotes on Earth. We've seen his spiral marks in the second game, and I believe Venom has already sent some kind of signal to Null, who should be preparing for an invasion this time. He fits perfectly into the third Spider-Man, but honestly, he's such a colossal villain that he might end up feeling a bit too much in the next game. Nevertheless, the entire symbiote storyline should logically continue along the narrative of King in Black. Oh, but not mine. I differ on a biological level. Dr. Michael Morbius did not make an appearance in Spider-Man 2, even though the first game included many easter eggs and hints related to characters from the comics. One of the most significant hints was the inclusion of a character who uses the alias Dr. Michael Morbius in the story. Among the numerous heroes and villains who may join Marvel's Spider-Man 3, Morbius could feature as either another antagonist or an anti-hero compelled to seek redemption following the events of the first game. In the comics, Morbius sometimes uses the cover identity of Dr. Morgan Michaels, and a character with the same name appears in the first game. This version of Morgan is a scientist who worked on the Devil's Breath drug for Oscorp. Driven by a desire for redemption, he collaborates with Spider-Man to find an anti-serum for the dangerous chemical that ultimately gets sprayed all over New York. Morbius could have a complex role in the third game storyline, and it'll be intriguing to see how his character evolves in this installment. It's likely that Michaels will become Morbius. In the canon, he suffers from a rare blood disease and is trying to find a way to cure himself. During his research, he accidentally transforms into a living vampire gaining supernatural abilities including speed, echolocation, and endurance. However, he also develops vampire attributes such as a hunger for blood. Morbius is a complex character, and his moral dilemmas and quest for redemption are central to his storylines. He often struggles to control his vampire instincts and uses his abilities to combat villains and crime. He sometimes collaborates with other superheroes, including Spider-Man. His appearance in the third game could be a significant plotline, and perhaps he might help Harry wake up from his condition. Get 
the G serum ready. ASAP. Undoubtedly, the main antagonist of the third game will be Norman Osborn in the form of Green Goblin. He initially asked Spider-Man to save Harry, but became greatly embittered due to the uncertain ending. In the hospital, he immediately ordered the preparation of the mysterious G Serum. Given the ending, it becomes clear that Insomniac already has clear plans for Spider-Man 3, even though PlayStation has not officially announced the game yet. The most obvious hint at the sequel revolves around Norman Osborn, who is on the path to becoming Green Goblin. G Serum, which Norman mentions is likely to be taken by him eventually, leading to his transformation into the Goblin in the third part. Considering that Norman now has personal grievances with Spider-Man, it is certain to lead to a clash among all parties, making Green Goblin the primary antagonist of the next game. It makes sense that he might succeed in killing Peter Parker, given that he knows Spider-Man's secret identity, which gives him a significant advantage. Moreover, Norman has been present in every installment as a sort of shadowy villain who has yet to be fully revealed. The key moment in the scene is the mention of the G-Serum. As you may have gathered, that formula not only grants the subject the power to cure all diseases but also immense strength, but it comes with side effects like mental clouding and insanity. It's logical that Osborn is preparing the serum to save Harry, but the narrative seems to intentionally blur the lines between Norman and Harry when it comes to who will become the Goblin. It's possible that they will introduce a plot element where the G-Serum is extremely dangerous, requiring further experimentation and research, and Norman won't have the luxury of time. Later, it could be revealed that the test subject must have the same blood, and possibly, Norman as a father decides to test on himself, thus becoming the Green Goblin. This approach could add depth to the storyline, as it would involve Norman directly in the transformation into the Goblin. Fans have eagerly awaited his appearance since the first game, and the developers have saved him for the epic finale of the trilogy. While some may have expected to see the Goblin's design at the end of the second game, it appears that the creators are are reserving the big reveal for the third installment. Norman's bitterness towards Peter adds a layer of complexity to their conflict, and as seen in No Way Home, when Willem Dafoe's Goblin, even from another reality, represents pure evil for Spider-Man, it emphasizes the deeply personal nature of their rivalry. Norman Osborn's personal connection to Peter Parker makes their conflict all the more tragic, and it's likely that the third game will be filled with dramatic scenes and plot twists. Nonetheless, the Green Goblin is undoubtedly one of the most iconic villains in Spider-Man's mythology, often considered an arch nemesis. He is one of those villains that authors typically reserve for something significant. He's not just a villain of the week like Electro, for instance. If the Goblin makes an entrance, it promises something large scale. He doesn't rely solely on brute force. Norman always seeks to break Peter as a person, and has been responsible for numerous horrifying events in his life. The strategic intelligence, big influence, and eventual maniacal madness make the Goblin an incredibly compelling villain who is sure to appear in Spider-Man 3.